Hey everyone, how are you? How <clears throat> hey guys, how are you? It's your girl Meg. We're back for another video. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Meg and I am a beauty, lifestyle, family vlogger and I love making videos. So for today's video, we're gonna do something travel related. Yeah! We are going to be talking about my five biggest tips for traveling with kids 10 and under. Our kids have been on well over 50 flights in their lifetime. So I've got a couple of tricks I want to pass on to you guys. If you like that kind of stuff, stay tuned. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe button. I'd love to be your friend. Make sure to follow along on social media where I post lots of content daily on my blog as well. So hope we can stick around and be friends for a while. Let's get into this. I want to give you a little bit of backstory. My kids are four and seven, and I have one on the way that's due in August. So I've got seven and a half years of mother experience and travel experience from birth to seven and a half years old. So that's why I'm thinking ages birth to 10, these tips will definitely be applicable for you. My kids have been on mostly domestic flights. We have taken them international before. They have been flown from Vancouver, Canada. A cruise where we went into the Bahamas and Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands. They have been international, but for the most part, this is gonna be geared towards domestic flights. If you want international travel tips, maybe Maybe one day I'll take them to Europe or something, but now is not the time. So, okay, like I said, my kids have been on well over 50 flights in their lifetime. And we started for my oldest, Kennedy. She took her first flight at two months old, and I believe Caroline was about four months old when she took her first flight. My kids love airplanes, they love air travel, they're great travelers. We've never really given that up. That's one thing my husband and I are just, we love so much to do together that we just never gave it up when we have kids. And I think having that whole philosophy that, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit harder when you travel with kids, but it's no reason to give it up. I think just having that mindset of like, all right, this is a little harder, but we're not gonna let our kids interfere with the things that we like to do. I think you'll have a much more relaxed attitude about the whole idea of traveling with your kids. Yeah, it's more expensive because we're playing, paying for four airplane tickets and then soon to be a fifth once this little one turns two, but, it's something we budget for. It's something that we save our money for. It's something that we splurge. It's just our favorite way to splurge and treat ourselves. That's my philosophy on air travel with kids. You should do it. You should travel with them. Instill that love. And as they grow, they're gonna be amazing and they're gonna wanna travel all the time. In fact, my kids are like, okay, so when's the next trip? <laughs> all the time. That's a really long intro. Let's get into my top five tips that I would definitely recommend to you if you are going to travel with your children. Baby and up. Okay, first of all, my biggest tip, this is huge. If you do nothing else from this video, just do this one thing, and that is get yourself TSA pre-check. I'm not even kidding. It's the best thing ever. You don't have to take things out of your suitcases and put them on the belt. You don't have to take your shoes off and fiddle with kids. And it's, it's a nightmare going through security to begin with. But when you've got kids and a stroller and all sorts of stuff, it's just harder. So TSA PreCheck makes life so much easier at the airport and it reduces your time actually going through security exponentially. Okay. So when my husband and I got TSA PreCheck, we were actually going to Europe. So we did global entry. So if you are going to do any sort of international travel within the next five years, I'd say definitely go for that global entry application because it does get you a free five years of TSA PreCheck. If you don't think you're going to be doing any international travel, don't bother with it. But it's easy to do. Make sure you do it well enough in advance so you can put it on your airline reservation. You can definitely add it after you've booked. I'm pretty sure you'll just make sure you either call the airline or in your rewards account. Like with Southwest, I can add that number in after an airline reservation has been made. So just know that you need to do that in a well enough advance. And one tip I also have with that is if everyone's booked on the same air reservation and only one person has TSA pre-check, the entire family can go with that one person through the TSA pre-check line. You need it, it's amazing. I am so spoiled now, I will never not have it. Like, <laughs> I 
don't like to take my shoes off or take things out of my bag anymore, okay? I'm just not doing it. Okay, second tip is to be a smart packer. Understand your airline's baggage policy and how to capitalize on that. So when we fly Southwest Airlines, we know that you can check two bags per ticketed person. So that's a lot that you can throw in and check and not even have to worry about going through the airport. You know, if I'm by myself and I can avoid checking a bag, I will try to avoid that. But if I have kids to wrangle and other things to deal with, I don't wanna drag bags through the airport plus children. So I capitalize on checking bags. Also know that you can check car seats and strollers if you want to, but when I have babies and or stroller age kids, I definitely always bring the stroller through the airport with me. And then when you get to the uh, gate, you tell the agent, I'd like to gate check. When you board the jet bridge, when you board the plane, you leave the stroller there, they put it under the plane for you and they bring it back out when you get out, when you're like leaving the plane. So always take the stroller with you, but if you want to check it, you can. I just like to have it when I'm going through the airport. People are kind of back and forth about car seats. There's a lot of car seat purists. If you're very particular about the way your car seat is handled, you know, you might not want to check it, but we're of the philosophy that if the car seat gets ruined under the plane or whatever, like, or being jostled around, we can buy another one. It's not the end of the world. But we've never really had any of our car seats be ruined because we also put them in these backpacks. I'll leave links below to what I'm talking about. These big backpacks that you can put on your shoulders and you can pack the car seats in that keeps it pretty well protected. Otherwise, they're going to just throw a plastic bag over the thing and throw it out into the plane. So definitely if you're going to check a car seat, buy a backpack. There's some talk whether or not the car seat's warranty may be ruined if you check a bag, but again, that's something that doesn't matter that much to me. Like I said, if something happens to the car seat, I will buy another one. I'm not gonna risk my kid being in a car seat that is not safe, okay? Safety is important. Also, when you're packing, I just wanna share this one thing. I shared it in my Amazon favorites video. I love these space saver bags. It has made packing so much easier. You can throw all your items and clothes in here and squeeze it down. It gets the air out of it. It compresses everything down to make room in your suitcase. So I just can't imagine packing for vacations with my kids without these anymore. They're just an amazing way to save space when you pack. Okay, third tip, be the master of the carry-on bag. Really have a bag of tricks ready to go in that carry-on bag, be smart about it. Depending on if you have a toddler, a preschooler, an elementary age kid, or a baby, just depends on what you want in your bag. If you have a baby, make sure you have diapers. Believe it or not, one flight when Caroline was a baby, I forgot diapers. I had like one, and then she had a bad dirty diaper and I had to ask a mom in the airport if I could have one of her diapers. <laughs> it was one of those moments where I was like, well, I feel like the worst mom ever, but it happens. Don't forget. But I don't like to go crazy. I just like to pack enough diapers to get me through the end of the day or maybe the day after. And then when I get to my destination, I go ahead and buy all the diapers I need. So it's not taking up tons of space in my bag. Uh, make sure you have a change of clothes for the baby and maybe a change of shirt for you in case the baby like pukes, poops, pees on you, you know, bodily functions happen and I don't want to smell, okay? <laughs> Make sure if you're bottle feeding, formula feeding or whatever, sippy cups are in there as well. You just never know. If you have toddlers or preschoolers, elementary age kids, snacks are crucial. I mean, you can get snacks on the plane, but we always pack a lot of snacks because they keep our kids quiet and like something to do. As bad as that sounds, but I'd rather my kid be eating a bunch of snacks than making a ton of noise, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or being really annoying. We always have headphones in our carry-on. We always pack their devices like an iPod or an iPad. Headphones are absolutely essential. The last thing people want to hear around them is these weird games that these kids play or these annoying kids shows. Please pack headphones. Make sure the games and movies and TV shows are all downloaded onto the kids' devices because the Wi-Fi can tend to be a little spotty and not that great on airplanes, so you wanna make sure everything's downloaded to the device. You want hand sanitizer, bring a portable charger to charge all your devices, small blankets or jackets for the kids because the plane tends to get really cold really quickly and the kids can be uncomfortable. If you are a nursing mom, 
or not, it doesn't matter. Having like a, a pillow, like a nursing pillow, like a boppy was always helpful for me because I could lay the baby on that while we traveled. Number four, know the rules of your airline and any other things that you might need to know before you go. So really research and do your homework as far as like, okay, what do I need to bring as far as identification? So speaking of which, when the kids are like a, considered a lap infant when they're under two, you are technically supposed to bring some sort of identification like a birth certificate to prove their age. Now, we've always brought it with us, but we've only been asked for it maybe a handful of times, but it's always important to just have it with you just in case. You just never know what's gonna happen. When they're over two and they're ticketed passengers, most of the time when we go through security, the TSA agent will just be like, hi, what's your name? And they'll like tell them their names and check it off on their boarding pass and like let them through. Now, that's not to say sometimes it might just be good to have it if you're unsure if you're just unsure bring it just in case I always just think that's a good policy now as far as liquids and going through security there are some exceptions to the rule with like that three ounce rule you can definitely bring full-size liquid medicines for the children and babies through security all you have to do is just remove it from your bag alert a TSA agent tell them that this is the kids medicine and they just put it through the scanner or they scan it separately or whatever same with formula or or breast milk or anything like that. Anything that is like a need for a child, you can bring over four ounces. When you get through the line, you just have to tell them, hey, I have this, pull it out of your bag and it gets scanned separately and it's no big deal. And they're usually very nice about it and it's never any problem. Big thing is just to know the rules of your airline and always call if you have a question. Just call their customer service line and just ask your question and they'll be so happy to answer it or look on their websites. They're usually pretty clear about what you need to bring, what you don't need to bring. I know it can be overwhelming, so if in doubt, just ask them. It's better to be over prepared before you go to the airport rather than just like being a mess when you get there. Okay, and the last tip I have is to have realistic expectations. I mean, you know your kid the best, right? I know that my kids are really hungry and thirsty when they get on airplanes so when we get to the airport we always make sure to hold off on all food hold off on drinks and buy a big bottle of water when we get through security so that when they get onto the plane they're not always like begging for water and we have enough snacks in our bag with some kids they're more high energy you know you understand that as the parent right so make sure that they have time before you get on the plane to run it out run out the energy don't pull out all your bag of tricks until you are on that plane if they're excited about an activity or something that they're gonna get to do on the plane, hold off because it'll keep them entertained then they might lose interest. <laughs> also with activities on the plane, I just really don't like the idea of bringing a lot of small items because if your kids are anything like mine, they're gonna drop everything everywhere. The idea of Legos or puzzle pieces or things like that on a plane stress me out. I don't wanna be stressed out on the plane. So I'm having realistic expectations with my kids that they're gonna probably drop everything everywhere. So keeping things to like toys that are they can hold or books or other things that it's not gonna fly everywhere. There's also these like little sticky things they can put on windows and stuff. It's just fun. If you have a baby last thing about being realistic like babies cry it happens it's okay don't be that parent that freaks out over everything it's gonna be okay you're gonna get through it it's only a few hours right and anticipate your child's needs so whenever my kids were babies and I was nursing them I would always nurse them on take out off and in landing and I would hope to God that they would sleep but there would be times where Caroline would freak out Give yourself some grace. Have realistic expectations. It's gonna be okay. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> and last thing, don't be afraid to ask for help. If you are on a plane and you need help from a flight attendant or anybody or you're in the airport, ask for help. It's really okay. If you need more snacks, they'll bring snacks. They'll be like, okay. If they sense that you might be in a little bit of a pickle, like you're kind of stressed out they'll do what they can to like help you as best as they can so don't be afraid to ask for that okay okay so i hope that was helpful those were my biggest tips when it comes to flying with kids from birth to elementary age leave me a comment below if there's something that you find really helpful when you're flying with your kids or when you're traveling with your kids i would love to know thank you guys so much for watching this video i will see you all in my next one bye